In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to derive the firm's seven short run cost functions from a Cobb Douglas production function. Take the Cobb Douglas production function of Q equals L to the one half times K to the one half power. L is units of labor. K units of capital. Oops, units of capital. Q is the firm's output, quantity of output. A few things that we're going to need in this problem. Since we're deriving short run cost functions, capital is going to be fixed at some level. So let's let K equal 25. A few other things that we'll need are the firm's wage, what the firm pays each worker. Call that W for short. Say that equals $100. And then we need the firm's rental rate of capital, firm's price of capital, let R represent that, and we'll set the rental rate of capital equal to $500. So again, just to recap, we have a Cobb-Douglas production function, and we want to derive the firm's seven short-run cost functions. The first step is to take this production function and solve for L. So I'm going to substitute our level of capital, 25 in for K, and then take the square root of that. I'm just rewriting. And now solve for L. Go over here. Dividing both sides through by 5. And then what we need to do now is square both sides. And to square both sides, get rid of the square root of L. And squaring 5 here in the denominator gives us 25. So this is a key result for us, and I'll show you what to do with this in a second. Okay, moving down here a tad. We're going to start with the firm's total cost. So total cost equals variable cost, or some call it total variable cost, plus fixed cost. And again, some books or professors may refer to that as total fixed cost. So total cost is the sum of the firm's variable cost of production plus the firm's fixed cost of production. In this example, our only variable cost is going to be labor. So variable cost is going to be W, the wage, times labor, number of units of labor, and our fixed cost, our only fixed cost is going to be capital, the price of capital or the rental rate is R, times the units of capital. So what we're going to do now is substitute in what we know for these values. W is 100, we let W equal 100. L, we just solved, is Q squared divided by 25. The price of capital is 500, and we're multiplying that by K, and we're dealing with 25 units of capital. So let's just simplify that slightly. Total cost equals 4Q squared, 100 divided by 25 gives us 4, plus 500 times 25, 12,500. So this is one of the firm's seven cost functions, the firm's total cost. Let me get a new sheet here. So let me just rewrite. So if the firm's total cost is 4Q squared plus 12,500, we can now easily solve the other six cost functions for the firm. The firm's variable cost is going to be this component the component that depends on the quantity of output, 4Q squared. The firm's fixed cost 
is going to be the constant, 12500 This is the amount the firm has to pay over some time period, regardless if they produce zero units, two units, or a thousand units. The next thing we need is the firm's um, average total cost. Average total cost, or the per unit cost of production, equals the firm's total cost divided by quantity. So we're just going to take the firm's total cost function and divide it through by Q. And if we do that, we're going to get 4Q plus 12,500 divided by Q. So this is the firm's average total cost. Now let's get the firm's average variable cost. Average variable cost is variable cost divided by Q or 4q squared divided by q equals 4q. And the firm's average fixed cost is fixed cost divided by q, which is 12,500 divided by q. Uh, one thing you'll note here, uh, you may recall that average total cost is average variable cost plus average fixed cost. So if you look at our average total cost equation, notice this 4Q, well, that's average variable cost. And this 12,000 divided by, 12,500 divided by Q, that's average fixed cost. See it down here. All right, uh, we need one more cost, and that's the firm's marginal cost. Marginal cost is a derivative concept. We're going to take the derivative of the total cost equation with respect to output. And if we do that, uh, we're going to get 8q. The derivative of 4q squared is just 8q. Uh, the derivative of a constant is 0, so our marginal cost, again, is just a derivative of this top equation. And we get 8q. Uh, it's also as a little side here, marginal cost is also nothing more than the derivative of the variable cost equation with respect to output. Since fixed costs don't change, the derivative of total cost is going to, with respect to output, is going to be the same thing as the derivative of variable cost with respect to output. So if we take the derivative of the variable cost equation, 4q squared, once again we get back 8q. And that is seven of the firm's, all seven of the firm's short run cost functions. Hope you found this beneficial.